This week's word of the week is going to be interpass temperature. And on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being not that big of a deal, 10 being a big deal, if you're in the welding world and you don't know what interpass temperature is, it's probably like a 6 or a 7. So I'll just go over here and write, uh, I guess, 6.5. <laughs> it's pretty important that you know it. If you don't know it, you're going to look a little foolish. Uh, but the, the reason this came about was I had a guy call me and he said he was doing a weld test and there was an interpass temperature of 300 and he couldn't get the pass to stay below 300. And I was a little confused at what he was talking about. But after talking to him for a little bit, I realized he was thinking that you couldn't have the weld get above 300 as you're welding, like the past in, as you're welding, it can't get above 300, if that makes sense. And I explained to him, in order to have an inner pass temperature requirement, you have to have a multi-pass weld. And that's how I kind of straightened them out. And I never thought of it that way, but it does kind of sound like inner pass temperature, it's within a pass. It's while you're welding, it can't get above 300 degrees. And I'm not saying 300 degrees is the, the answer to all the inner pass temperatures, but that's what his was. So I got to thinking about it and I explained it to him as a multi-pass weld. I said, what are you doing? He explained it to me. It wasn't even a multi-pass weld. It was one weld and it was actually a T-joint with a bevel on it on a, I think he said 3 8 plate. So, he was trying to take a temperature as he was welding and thought that the bead was going to be below 300 degrees. Well, there's no way that's going to happen because while you're welding, it's thousands and thousands of degrees, right? So I thought I'd do a word of the week, just kind of straighten anybody out that was having problems understanding what air pass temperature is. And let's start right up here. Multi-pass weld. It has to be a weld that you're doing more than one pass. Because what it means is you're taking the temperature, and let's just write down 300 because that's what the um, guy that called me was working with. So if you have a, pe uh, a weld, and I'm going to draw one up here, and it's going to be about six passes, let's say, six or seven, and I'm going to kind of show you when you would take the interpass temperature as you're doing that weld, right? So you do a weld, when you're going to fill it up with the next bead, that's when you take the temperature, and it has to be below 300 degrees before you put that next pass on. So if, you don't, if you're not doing a multi-pass weld, this is null and void, it doesn't matter. You have to have a multi-pass weld. So why would you need to do an interpass temperature as you're doing a weld? Now, if it's a weld testing, it's, they're going to do some mechanical uh, testing on it, and if you get it too hot, it could mess up the microstructure. So I wrote down right here, the reason you do interpass temperature is to maintain microstructure properties as best you can. When you're welding, you're messing the microstructure up. So there's a lot of temperature control things that you do to try and keep the microstructure properties as even as possible, which is hard to do, but one of the ways that you do that is interpass temperature checking, okay? If you get it too hot, what happens is it decreases mechanical properties in, one, in some way, shape, or form of the weld metal. And if you're gonna do uh, destructive testing on it and you're decreasing mechanical properties, it's probably gonna break in a bend test, right? So you wanna make sure you don't get it too hot as you're putting a multi-pass weld in. And you do that by checking the interpass temperature, all right? Ways to check, it's pretty simple. This is the old school way. Temp sticks, and now everybody has these, right? You pull the trigger, 77 degrees in here. It's summer, uh, beginning of August, that's probably about right. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna draw up um, a mock joint, and I'm gonna put passes in, and as I draw them in, I will tell you when you would do an interpass temperature check, and then at the end, I'm gonna find a, a welding procedure specification that shows where this 300 degrees is. I think on the one that I have, it's 200 degrees. Uh, it just varies on what the welding inspector wants to do. But we'll take a look at that uh, welding procedure specification show you exactly where that is on that document in case you ever have to do a weld test and you're looking to find the exact interpass temperature requirements. All right, what we got here is a single V groove joint. And you can see I put the root pass in here as pass one. So you get done welding this and you put the temp stick on or the digital thermometer and it comes back as 600 degrees. I just totally made that up. You now have to wait until it gets below 300 degrees, if that's your interpass temperature, before you can put the next pass on, all right? And your next pass is probably going to be over here like this. So that's two. And then again, you have to hit it with the digital thermometer or the temp stick. And I will uh, zoom in on a temp stick so you can kind of see what it is. And I think I'm going to do a video on how you use a temp stick. But a temp stick is basically, it looks like a crayon. And if it melts when you touch it, there's a temperature assigned to it. That means you're exceeding that temperature that's assigned to that temp stick. 
So if it's 300 degrees and it melts, you have to wait until it doesn't melt. With a digital thermometer, you just shoot it with the gun and it will tell you what it is, all right? So you do pass two, and let's say you hit it with the temp stick and it's, a, it's or uh, temp stick, the digital thermometer says 400 degrees. You have to wait until it gets below 400 degrees before you put pass three in, all right? And you don't want to quench it. I forgot to mention that. If you quench it, again, you're messing up the microstructure of it. So you got to just kind of let it air cool. So it, it can be a long process if you're uh, doing a, a multi-pass weld like this. I'm, I'm assuming this is like half inch thick plate. All right, so three, you hit it with a temp stick. It, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't melt. So you go to pass four here. And again, you got to keep testing it for the interpass temperature to make sure it's below 300. Once it's below 300 again, you do five, and then you have to wait till it's below 300 again, and then you do six. And then you're gonna go into your mechanical testing. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of when you would do it. You just get a pass done, wait till it's below the interpass temperature, do your next pass. I always say, if you're gonna do a weld test like this, have something else going on, because you gotta wait, and welders tend to not be patient, and you cannot rush it. You have to wait for that to air cool to get below the interpass temperature, all right? So what we'll do now is we'll take a look at a temp stick and the gun real quick up close, and then we'll go look at that welding procedure specification, and I'll show you where the interpass temperature is on it, and we'll wrap this baby up. So before we look at our welding procedure specification, on the left you can see that temp stick. That's a 300 uh, degree Fahrenheit one, kind of what we've been talking about. And you see how it kind of looks like a crayon right here? It kind of is a crayon. You take it, you draw on it, if it melts, then it's too hot. If it doesn't melt, then you're below 300 degrees. With the digital ther thermometer here, pull the trigger, and it reads out 78 degrees. Real easy, right? There's more and more digital thermometers out there. Um, I do think that if you're in the welding world, you should know how to use temp sticks as well, but that's just my opinion. So let's move on to the welding procedure specification, get a look at that, and we'll get out of here. All right, so here's a welding procedure specification that I wrote. A lot of information on them, but down here at the bottom, if you look under preheat, on the very bottom there, interpass temperature, minimum of 60 degrees, maximum 200 degrees. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of why we take interpass temperatures and multi-pass welds and and what the interpass temperature is designed to do and prevent. That's all we got for today. Thanks for watching and subscribing to TV Weld. We'll see you next time.